This is a movie about friction. Friction is a force that arises when two surfaces try to slide over each other. This is the force that causes this book sliding across the table to come to a stop. Without friction, the book wouldn't stop at all. Once in motion, it would just keep on sliding with a constant velocity. On the one hand, that would be a cool thing to see. On the other hand, if friction were not present at all in our lives, we wouldn't be able to walk, it would be very challenging to sit in a chair, and even just getting the book to sit still on the table would be no easy task. And friction is everywhere, so it's important to be able to understand how it works, so it may be included in an understanding of how the world works. Here's a physics book being pushed across a smooth wooden surface, and thinking about the forces at play can help with developing an intuition about how friction works. As usual, gravity is pulling down on the book, and a normal force is supporting the book. The hand in this clip is pushing on the book, and there's a frictional force resisting that sliding motion. If the book is moving along at constant velocity, and it appears to be doing so in this clip, then there is no acceleration, so the frictional force and the force of the hand should be equal. If a second book is piled on top of the first one, the gravitational force increases, and so does the normal force. There is a proportional increase in the frictional force and in the force that the hand needs to exert to keep the book moving. If a third book is added, all of the forces scale up again. Let me go back to the image of the single book and point out that the frictional force is also affected by the two surfaces that are in contact. If the book is placed on pavement instead of that smooth wooden surface, the frictional force will increase. So the quality of the surfaces that are in contact also affects the magnitude of the frictional force. All of these factors are built into the following equation, which is used to determine the force of kinetic friction that arises when an object slides across a surface. Friction can also be present when the surfaces are not sliding, and that kind of friction is called static friction. I'll say more about static friction soon. The k in the f sub k term in this equation is emphasizing that the surfaces are sliding, and it's best to be clear on the force diagram whether you're talking about kinetic or static friction, so I'll go ahead and make that clear. The funny looking term is mu sub k. This stands for the coefficient of friction, and it's a constant that has to do with the quality of the surfaces that are in contact. The fancy looking m is the Greek letter mu, and the subscript indicates that this is for kinetic friction. The value of the coefficient of friction depends on the two surfaces that are in contact, so mu sub k would be different for the book sliding over the table than for the book sliding over the pavement. Notice also that the equation uses the normal force rather than mg. F sub n and mg happen to be equal in this example, but there are plenty of cases where the normal force is not equal to mg or has nothing at all to do with mg. It is the normal force that's the key to determining the frictional force. Finally, notice that speed and surface area are not represented at all in this equation. As it turns out, speed and surface area do not affect the force of friction at all, so they don't show up in the equation. This is sort of counterintuitive, and typically the only way to really convince yourself that this is true is by experimenting. Even if you don't have a way to measure precisely, try pushing a book around at different speeds and see if you can convince yourself that the frictional force is not changing. The surface area thing is a bit more tricky, but if you can find a box or a block of wood that has exactly the same surface on two sides, try pushing it around and then rotate it and push it around some more, and you should feel that the frictional force has not changed. Now let's talk about static friction. Even if an object does not slide over a surface, it's possible for friction to be present. Let's use this vase as an example. When this vase is just sitting on the surface, there are just two forces acting on it, mg and the normal force. But when the vase experiences a little push, a frictional force arises to balance that pushing force. The pushing force can increase, and the force of static friction will increase, but only to a point. There is some maximum force that static friction can produce, and if the pushing force exceeds that maximum force of static friction, the thing will start to slide. What's kind of interesting is that the maximum force of static friction is actually slightly bigger than the force of kinetic friction. You can feel this when you push something really heavy across a floor, like this overstuffed laundry hamper. You kind of have to shove it to get it going, but then once it's going, it's not as difficult to keep it sliding. It's much easier to feel this effect than it is to show it, so go push on something heavy and see if you can convince yourself. All of these factors are built into the equation for static friction. This says that the maximum force of static friction is equal to mu s times the normal force. The word static is meant to indicate that the surfaces are not sliding over each other. That will often mean that the object is motionless, but there are plenty of examples of moving objects that are experiencing static friction. For example, a running person is in motion, but their feet are generally not slipping. 
The feet push back on the ground and the ground actually pushes forward on the feet, propelling the runner forward. The forces labeled here are actually forces of static friction. Getting back to the equation, the frictional force is proportional to the normal force, just as it was for kinetic friction. Mu s is a quantity that has to do with the quality of the surfaces that are in contact. And Fs max does not depend on surface area. The max in Fs max should serve as a consistent reminder that just because something experiences a force of static friction does not mean that it is experiencing the maximum force of static friction. I can't resist ending with one example. You can skip this if you're tired of listening, but this example is a physics teacher favorite, so it might help you to keep watching. This is a picture of a desk that was in my house growing up, and now I have it in my own home. I always thought it was a really cool desk because the lid lifts up. And I remember as a kid being really interested in figuring out how high I could lift that lid before whatever was on top of the desk would slip. I'll just run the movie back to show you that the slipping begins at just about this angle. Let's call that angle theta max, draw some forces, and see what we can learn about the angle. The forces acting on the book are going to be the usual suspects, mg and the normal force, and now we'll also add a force of static friction. Here are the components of mg, and now I'll set up two equations using Newton's second law. In the x direction, mg sine theta minus fs is equal to mAx, and in the y direction, fn minus mg cosine theta is equal to mAy. I'm looking for the angle where the book just starts to slide, and that will happen if a is anything greater than zero, even by the tiniest bit. Let me set a equal to zero to look for the threshold. Rearranging, the maximum angle of theta will occur when mg sine theta is exactly equal to the force of friction. Fs max is mu s fn, and I can learn about the normal force by looking at the y direction. Ay is zero, so fn is equal to mg cosine theta. I'll make that substitution, get rid of mg, and rearrange to find that mu s is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Of course, sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. I was curious about theta max, so let me take inverse tan of both sides, and I find that theta max is inverse tan of mu s. This is an interesting result because it shows that the maximum angle one can raise the lid of the desk before things begin to slip depends on what is on top of the lid. And actually, a further point is that if you want to find the coefficient of static friction between two surfaces, you can just increase the angle between them until one of them slips. The tangent of that angle will be the coefficient of static friction, 